in the military and I worked with a guy who had run to be an alderman in Milwaukee, I think it was. I'm pretty sure that's where it was. He was a guy with a Polish last name. I'm not going to get into the details on that, but he'd run to be an alderman. And uh, his reason for running to be an alderman wasn't that he was trying to get into the political class per se. It was that, quite frankly, they pay they would pay you for a part-time job, a pretty handsome paycheck at the time. And that's what sort of made him think politics was a good idea. And he was one of those people who would let stuff run off his back and it wouldn't bother him. He was sort of Teflon in his, in his exterior. He was a nice enough guy, but the point is his motivations for what he was doing, in my opinion, uh, were wrong. Uh, maybe he had other motivations and he just really didn't talk about them. I didn't talk, talk about them. I didn't talk too much to him about that. But the point is that there is a tendency for a lot of people who end up in the political class to get there because of a couple of things. One, because they realize that they can get things out of being in politics that they really shouldn't count on doing. And two, because, quite frankly, like I was when I went into the military, they're just basically looking for some sort of uh, some sort of work that will pay them without having to do too much work in the process. I wanted to talk about another idea, and it's the idea of politician to lobbyist today on the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Kurt, and today is Saturday, the 23rd of October of 2021. Welcome to everyone who's here on Rumble on the podcast and on YouTube. Again, the subject for today is going to be politician to lobbyist. Let me get through my notes, and we will well, I'll give you an idea sort of what I'm talking about so that we have a baseline established when I make my when I do my further discussion on it. One of the talkers I listen to on a regular basis, Drew Burquist, was talking about something I recently discussed on the Daily Summation. In fact, he talked about it and another thing with which I agree, that being single-issue bills. Bills that are for single issues instead of making these behemoth, gigantic things that make it so that you can't tell what somebody supports and what they don't based on the fact that they don't support a bill because there are things that kill it. Right. His topic for discussion, the main, the other topic for discussion, the one I want to sort of work on a little bit today is was term limits for at least U.S. senators and representatives. You should know I not only agree with him, but I think we need to find a way to cause that to happen without the consent or even mild agreement of those senators and representatives. I'm inclined to believe there's some way to do that. I could be wrong, but I think that whether it's a constitutional amendment or whatever, it should be possible. On today's edition, I wanted to talk about something else on which Mr. Burquist and I somewhat, probably not totally, disagree. Drew Burquist said, uh, basically said, when people leave political office, they should more or less be able to do whatever they want. In my mind, though, there are things they probably should not be able, should not be allowed to do. One example would be using your relationships and knowledge of legislative workings to figure out how to lobby others for uh, in office for gain. I get that this is not necessarily harmful, uh, or that it isn't, is not necessarily harmful for old hands to lobby newbies. The problem is... It can be, and it can be devastatingly harmful in the right circumstances. The result is, when folks are paid to lobby people still in the fray, I consider that to be a problem. If they have friends in Congress and keep up with and work to get them to think in certain ways, that I'm not against. Once money enters into the picture or power, I'm no longer a fan. They can write books, they can go around speaking about their experience or frankly whatever they really want to, they can uh, even plug for folks they believe ought to be or stay in office. That said, working for various special interest groups, getting paid large amounts of cash or given uh, huge amounts of power to work on their behalf is not a thing with which I agree. You're permitted to disagree, of course. For my part, though, I'm not at all for allowing former legislators to do that sort of thing. <clears throat> it's just not that complicated. There are people out there 
who seem to be interested in taking advantage of former positions as legislators on a federal level particularly, but really on a state level and in many other situations and positions, who, who leave their, their office and then turn around and become lobbyists or, you know, work, work the crowd, as it were, in Congress and other places to get the agenda of certain people and groups through. And some of those people and groups are people you really don't want getting their agenda through. In fact, a lot of them are. The reason they're pushing their agenda is because people don't agree with their agenda lots of times and would not support it when it's pushed through, so they have to lobby folks for it. Now, I can make a statement to the effect that there are, there are groups like the NRA uh, and others who are who are essentially lobbying for beneficial things uh, who who hire people to lobby for them, and I get that. But the problem is, even in that situation, I don't believe those people should be in positions, particularly directly out of office, but really probably at all, where they're the ones who are doing that sort of lobbying. In fact, that really shouldn't be a function of lobbying. What should happen is people being elected should be statesmen, and they should do what statesmen ought to do. And look, here's the thing. Let's take the NRA as a perfect example of a group that you would think would be, it would be wonderful to lobby for. The thing of it is, if the legislators are doing what they should be doing, they should be upholding and protecting protecting and defending the Constitution in their role. And a part of the Constitution is, without a doubt, the Second Amendment to that Constitution, the right to keep and bear arms, right? Should Congress inherently, should everybody in Congress inherently support the right to keep and bear arms? Well, the obvious answer to that is yes. So, legi uh, so uh, excuse me, so lobbyists trying to lobby legislators for that sake shouldn't be a thing. It shouldn't need to be a thing. Why? Because that should be something that the legislators should do as a default position. And I have news for you. I'm one of those p crazy people who thinks that uh, I won't you know, I won't even argue against atomic weapons necessarily, but I certainly will argue that private citizens should be allowed to own howitzers and various other military equipment. They didn't say uh, that should be limited to, to the kind of small arms that you see in personal use. And I'm going to point something out, and I want to be perfectly clear on this. 90% I would bet, I can't prove, I can't, I'm not going to tell you that I know this, but I would bet some very large portion of activities it, which involve arms and are bad things like armed robbery or murders and so forth are actually committed by people who have weapons who are not supposed to have them. Now, I have to tell you that my personal take on that is that's not really a thing either, right? Oh, you're a felon? Yeah, you should be able to bear arms in my opinion. I know a lot of people will disagree with me, but here's my statement on that. If you use arms for bad purposes, your butt should go to jail. If you use arms for bad purposes and you get in a shoot shootout with law enforcement or you try and use those arms on law enforcement, then you should count on potentially dying from the fact that you're using arms in ways that you're not supposed to do so. The point of all of this is that lobbying is not, in my opinion, the way that that should be being dealt with. What should be happening is the people who are voted in should be statesmen. They should be people who are really interested in protecting that constitution and the various amendments to it, and they should make it their business to say, no, you cannot restrict the right to bear arms. It's a fundamental right specified in the Second Amendment. No, you shouldn't be able to keep people from demonstrating and so forth until they get into rioting and, and things of that nature, because that's in the First Amendment. No, you should not be able to keep people from practicing religion, because that's in the First Amendment. Uh, I won't get into certain other things like the fact that I don't think uh, um, churches should accept tax-exempt status, because as far as I'm concerned, they should be able to talk about whatever they darn well please when that pastor is in the pulpit and when people talk um, uh, among them. But the point of all of this, the simple point of all of this, is I'm not in favor of the politician-to-lobbyist move. I'm just not a fan. 
And I think that that's something that we probably ought to restrict and that we don't do a good enough job of at this point in time. I need to go ahead and wrap up. This is the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Kurt, and today is Saturday, the 23rd of October of 2021. That means tomorrow will be Sunday, the 24th of October of 2021. Remember, today is, for those who keep the Sabbath, it is the, the end of the Sabbath at uh, sundown this evening. Uh, thanks for being here, whether you came on Rumble, on podcasts on, the, on YouTube, on the podcast on YouTube. Uh, remember, Rumble is my preferred platform. You can give me a boxing glove or a plus as a positive feedback on Rumble. You can give me a minus as a negative feedback if you feel the need to do that on Rumble as well. You can give me a thumbs up or a like on YouTube as a positive feedback or a thumbs down or dislike as a negative feedback there. Today's subject has been politician to lobbyist. Tomorrow we're going to talk about feelings and actions, and this is sort of on the uh, autism subject that I periodically get on, but frankly, it's a good one for religion and politics, particularly from a cultural perspective. Hope you're doing well today. Hope things are going well for you, and hopefully we will see you again on Sunday's edition of the Daily Submission from Kirk's Religion and Politics. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video was recorded on Saturday, October 23rd of 2021. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's Religion and Politics. Thanks for watching this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I hope you found it entertaining or instructional and maybe both. Uh, if you want to see more from me, you can go to blogs.kpshubert.com. That's blogs.kpshubert.com. I am on Twitter, Parlor, and Minds.com. My handle on each of those is at KP Schubert. That's at K-P-S-H-U-B-E-R-T. I have a Rumble and a YouTube channel. They are the Kurtz Re Religion and Politics channels on Rumble and YouTube. I have a Facebook page. The Facebook page is Kurtz Religion and Politics as well. I, have, I am on Patreon. If you want to support me, that's one of the better places you can do that. And you will find me at Kurtz Religion and Politics on Patreon. Of a podcast. The podcast is podcasts with a with an s. dot kpshubert. dot com. That's podcasts. dot kpshubert. dot com. I think you should be able to find me with relative ease on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. The best way I find to do that is to look for Kurt's Religion and Politics. You can try to use the daily summation. I find that it doesn't work as well as a general rule, but you can always try that. I'm glad to have you aboard today, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.